I work from both in um, the United States and in India and um, it's growing up in India has been um, really great for uh, learning more about textile and um, like I've seen so much of a lot of uh, weaving a lot of like just the the touch of textile that um, that I think like has inspired me to um, to to do it more one of like one of the instance instances that really um, like brings back my memory is when I was um, growing up my grandfather would only use um, like a specific amount of a specific yard of cotton every year he would go buy it from um, like the the hand woven we call it khadi which is uh, just hand spun cotton from from India and then he would go buy it and get clothes made for that year only from those that yard of like cloth. Uh, I applied for Air Green because of like the focus on textile. I was doing a lot of ceramics before with textile. Um, so I was using textile and dipping it in clay and then weaving with like yards of muslin. But, but I really, really wanted to weave. And um, so I looked at, I stumbled upon Air Green one day because I was like textile residencies and um, and uh, really applied and I was also looking specifically for some in like the northern northern Europe so I was like Norway, Sweden, Iceland <laughs> um, and then also like coming to a different place you really understand like um, like the culture of textile and how people clothe themselves to keep them warm. Um, I, I traveled to northern um, northern Norway and really understood how important it was for uh, people to know how to make clothes well because it really made like it was a matter of life and death for most of the people that went out to sea uh, but it was also from like using you making use of all of the material that was there but being here at Air, um, Air Green has been really great for so I've been able to weave and make the um, make the projects that I had in mind for a very long time um, and also been able to meet uh, three other incredible artists that we keep like bouncing ideas from. The project that I'm working on out here, um, I came in with the idea of wanting to spin wool with, um, with steel wool. So basically when the steel wool and the wool is spun together, it will rust the, the wool slowly. And when it is woven into the fabric, the fabric fabric will reveal images over time, um, and also disintegrate. So I was really interested in like making this fabric with words from um, words such as like I see. So like thinking about consciousness and this relationship between the self and seeing, and how it creates a perception of the world, um, and. But the idea morphed as I was here, like it, it extended more, much further than I had imagined, which is amazing because then it brings new possibilities. Um, and then I also like bring a lot of forest into my work and the, and the metaphor of like making a forest or a metaphor of being a forest. So um, it's amazing, to, incredible to have a forest right here to walk into, which is so alive with like mushrooms and and like fungi, different types of fungi, and um, just the trees and shrubs. Like it's it's a very alive forest. Or like just the landscape is a very important part in my work itself, um, where I start thinking about the relationship between the human and the landscape, and like the internal landscape within the body, and like a landscape of um, the land itself and to be placed in um, a, in, in, a um, in an area where this is so prevalent where where, um, where it's where the forest is so close by you're in a quiet area you can see the stars you you can like basically walk by the water for a, for a while 
um, it's it helps like connect that um, from someone who lives in the city a lot of the times. Uh, I'm from Taiwan, so I'm full-time artist basically. But I did a lot of like um, community projects. So I work with uh, kids, adults, and it's related to education. As uh, Taiwan is like an island, so I think it's a, like a kind of the ocean is separate country from other place. So a lot of time I feel isolated. But that also made me feel like uh, I want to be an outsider and go travel to many different places and see many different cultures and then look back to my background, like in our culture as well. Like uh, when I was a kid, my mom always knitting the sweater for us to wear. So I think textile is kind of like um, a visual line, but it's also a uh, uh, invisible connection between me and the people and the society. So it's kind of like a, I'm using textile as a material, but it's a metaphor of the connection between human being and society and nature and the environment. I apply this like a air green residency is because I know there's a North region have a special ship from here and that's how I cannot get this kind of information if I'm in Taiwan. Also, it's different than other countries. Like uh, Taiwan, we don't have ship. We only have ship as a, uh, like a, for tourists to see, but we have a lot of gold. So it's kind of like every time when I want to work with war material, I have to buy from other country. So rather than all the material from line, I prefer that using my personal like uh, experience to be there, to experience the environment, what kind of culture and environment create this kind of material. And it's not just the material, it's also related to like uh, what kind of uh, loom people are using for weaving or what kind of tool or the nature, how they grow the animal. So that's how, why it's attracted me to come here to continue my research. The wool material, although it's come from sheep or wool, but it actually have different, many different kinds. And it's kind of the same as human being. Like uh, everyone's from different culture and we have different race, we have different color of the skin and the hair. So that's what I'm trying to put together like uh, as a human being and the environment. So if, for example, I actually bring some of the sheep I was collecting before from uh, New Zealand and like uh, this is from here and I did quite a lot of different residency from uh, before and Air Green is the first time that I have residency is just next by the lake so I was quite inspired by the environment also because I was working with nature and like every morning wake up and the first thing I see is the lake view yeah so I was like uh, thinking what can I do in this beautiful landscape as well but like um, Taiwan is an island so water is everywhere and like a seafood fish all these things is a part of me it's inside my blood so like after I got here I was like thinking oh when are we going to fish do uh, like fishing so I actually went out fishing once and then we got this uh, fish and then I, this is also the first time that I have to like uh, really take out the fish from the net and try to deal with them and cut them. I have to kill them and then clean the skin. And Christine, she was like trying to teach me how to cut the fish and so we have to like uh, throw the fish skin away and slice the meat. So I was like, they die for me. So I don't want to waste any part of it. And then she was like saying, in North region, you have this culture is using fish skin to make the boot. So it's actually give me the idea that I can use them. They can be one of my resources, the material as well. And also like working with sheep. Uh, wool, they are also part of the leather. 
So I have this idea of working with the fish skin and try to turn them into a fish leather. Yeah, it's kind of like um, this uh, air green residency give me the environment that I can totally merge into the nature, merge into the material and everything around me to give me the inspiration. A lot of residency I did before, they are not particularly focused on textile or fiber arts. So I feel like this time the um, we four different artists from different countries, we all interested in textile, but actually everyone have different like uh, inspiration to get into this material or technique and different view of seeing the same thing and even seeing the same environment. I think artists is kind of like a inventor. You have to like always create something new, something different. It's like a trying to bring the new perspective of seeing the thing so people will think and then the world will become better maybe. <laughs> like uh, making art this process as a long learning process like uh, teaching myself the new thing. So like um, for example I never make fish skin leather before so it's like a giving the opportunity to observe the world, observe the new technique, observe different conversation, different environments. So I think it's very important to be in somewhere unknown, like uh, unknown giving you the opportunity to learn and to create something unknown. So I am currently an artist working in Phoenix, Arizona, um, in the U.S. Uh, I'm a professor at Arizona State University. I run the fiber and textile program there. Um, so when I'm thinking about textiles and textile art, I'm really thinking about them within an academic and a university setting. Uh, my practice really focuses and revolves around weaving um, as this sort of way to create a textile, but it's also the sort of time and like a physically based um, creation of cloth. Uh, it also provides sort of a place and a time to think through um, what is going on sort of conceptually within the work. Um, so a lot of my work has to do with landscape and has to do with place, but takes this sort of um, ecological or textile thinking that happens within it. Um, my work has been rooted in the idea of landscape for maybe the last 10, 15 years, um, but different sort of understandings of what landscape is to an individual. And I use textiles as sort of an intermediary. Um, so thinking about the idea of the textile as something that is like deeply human um, and the sort of like the closest thing that we think of to the body as a primary form of shelter. Um, so to give sort of concrete examples of that, I use a lot of um, flags that I'll hand weave and hand dye for a space. So um, a project I did uh, pretty recently was I made a flag for these certain rocks that live in this landscape. Um, so I had these rocks within my studio and I decided they probably didn't belong within a studio, but I found the landscape that was comprised of them, of the sand of them. So I took these rocks that had been within my studio, wove flags for them, and then took all of them out to this sort of uh, national monument that was to them, that the government had already decided was a national monument to these rocks. So thinking about it as a homecoming or a potential for a conversation between objects. So I think of myself as a facilitator of these potential dialogues between things. The idea of coming to Airgreen was really exciting for me because of the sort of historic, um, the family lineage that I have here and the sort of ancestral uh, relations, uh, the difference in landscape and also the focus on textiles. It's not very often that we find um, textile specific residencies. I came into the residency with pretty open expectations of what was gonna happen here. It helps, I've found, to not have too specific of Sort of goals for what's going to happen, especially if there's not like you have to create an exhibition at the end. It's actually it's a lot nicer working in this sort of way because you can allow 
um, what's present in a place to inform the work and to inform what the body of work is you're going to create. So I think the work and the projects that I've started here are going to, I mean, I can't say this for sure, but it feels like this is a project that's going to be ongoing um, and going to be something that will probably become a larger project that couldn't have happened if I hadn't have been here and had this time in this place. Um, and it's also been really, really lovely to have time to work with three other artists from around the world. Um, we've had a really sort of nice, a nice dialogue and a nice repertoire within the house and within working within spaces with each other. It's oftentimes a rare opportunity where you have people around that you trust to like talk things through with and get feedback from um, and have just general conversations with. So to have that access 24 hours a day is something that's special. And I think the fact that we're all housed in um, sort of the same quarters, even though we like move out during the day, we all come together for meals every now and again. And to be able to casually talk through things you're trying to think about, whether it's um, sort of more general things about like where we're coming from, where our histories are as like different artists that are working with textiles from sort of different uh, situations. Um, there's been sort of a nice dialogue that's happened. I came from Iceland about uh, 30 years ago or more. There was no particular reason, it just mostly was that I was I wanted to change uh, the surroundings and uh, do something else and was like 19 years old. That's one of the big themes in my life, it's like in my artic, artistic life, it's like uh, uh, nature. And to begin with mostly using the colors and I back a little bit with the colors, but uh, I, I uh, continued and um, I was I was working with especially maybe the harsh uh, and great nature in the north, like uh, the glaciers uh, in Spitsbergen, Svalbard, and Iceland also the, with the volcanoes and the black sand. But after a while, I... Uh, I, I needed... Uh, I, I, I'll, I needed the touch. I needed the touch of the textile. And that's, uh, that's uh, something in that uh, I really like. It's, it's something you kind of have to have between your fingers. So then I started with those things that I've been doing mostly the last years. And that's uh, like uh, embroidering uh, motifs from the nature. Like here. For this project, for uh, Sundry Gren, I, when I applied, usually when I go to artist residency, I would like to go abroad, but when I applied here, it was also because I wanted to do this special project. I wanted to kind of walk in the hills and uh, in the wood and just go down by the lake and find some plants, whatever I wanted to use and uh, do planting with herbs. And that's what I've been doing. And it's all kind of different colors. Uh, and I really love it. It's so nice to just go out, find the plant, go in here and boil it. Or kind of or, uh, make the colors. So I really like it. And I spin it and I cut it. And uh, mostly I've been using these plants. But this color like, this is Iceland. <laughs> it is Iceland. It's, um, it's called Skover. It's very light and it grows on the stones. And these are very old. So you're not allowed to pick them from the stones. But if they're lying around because they have fallen off, then you can take them. I think they're like 100 or maybe more years old. This. So I took it with me. And I was looking very forward to see how they were going to come out. And mostly I got a lot of these brownish, greenish, maybe a little bit yellow. And then I got this. And I, told, I really like this. This is the first. 
and then after been they've been kind of laying in the water for like uh, 10 hours 12 hours and then I took it all up and then I heat it again and this is the next so it's got a lot of color in it and it's a red color and that's always difficult to get and I had read in an old book about uh, uh, like the women in the sagas, they try to, the richest ones from the Viking, they, they kind of try to make colors. I mean, those who had people to work for them and make beautiful uh, clothing. Many people just had the greyish, uh, yeah, white uh, kind of, uh, of, of white kind of thing. There is talk about the one of the women that she had this red dress and she had a red cap on top of it and it's like cape and I was reading it's called Islandsk Hárreða and Hallgerður Langbrók, a woman from this time, she, one of the Saka's great women, she had this dress and I decided I wanted to find out how it was made and it's like, uh, this called, it's called Islands Love, it, uh, it also grows here. We use it as a medicine plant, it's always been used as a medicine plant. But if you boil, if you kind of get the essence of the color out of it, it kind of gets a little bit uh, yellowish, yellow-greenish. But then you have to have a cowpea. And you put it in a cowpea over the night and then you get it up for an hour or something or two hours and get a lot of air into it so it's oxygenated I don't know how to say it in English but anyhow it um, kind of after a while and you put it back into the bucket with the cowpea and you have to put more cowpea in it so it's and if it's an old cowpea but two or three months old it's even better so it's stinking but it's a beautiful color that's coming and it took me like a one and a half week i think before this uh, suddenly one morning i came out and opened it and it was kind of starting to be, be red we are four of us and that's the, this artist recipe, she is the only one that I've been in that, uh, or participated in that has, everybody is working with textile. I've always been uh, like in, in Rome in Circolo, then you have kind of, uh, you're living together in a big, big, big flat and working, but you are, uh, it's all kinds of people all kinds of uh, artists working there at the same time, even even writers and uh, so it's not just visual artists. But here you kind of have this possibility to discuss everything around your, uh, your uh, like textiles. It's, it's not so often you meet just people that are working with textiles. And that's very nice. Also that uh, you, we come from so four different countries. Uh, and we are in different age. I mean, Kusala, that she is younger than my children. She's like 26 years old. So it's, uh, but it's nice. And the different countries and where we come from and how things are and who has been where and which, like you get a good uh, connection. It's like network building because you hear about other residencies. And maybe you should go there. But it's, it's um, another thing is um, about being here. It's uh, the cooperation between us has been nice. We, we are not working together, but we are kind of discussing and helping each other. It's like I'm coming down there to have a little bit more of coffee and Kusala. She's like, Morfrid, come on, what do you think? Should we do this or should I do that? And why? Uh, and then somebody other comes and we start talking and why are, what are you doing there? Oh, what a nice thing. And we are kind of discussing our things. Mm -hmm.